Some scientists think that one of our favorite foods today is actually related to dinosaurs. Who can tell me what kind of animal they think would be related to dinosaurs? How about the young lady with a blue balloon right in the front row? Um, birds. Birds, that's right. So scientists look at the fossils from dinosaurs and they look at modern day animals like birds and they think that they might be related. So my question is, how do we study dinosaurs? Can we just walk around and look at a dinosaur and say that we have learned something about them? Do dinosaurs walk around today? So when scientists want to study dinosaurs, not birds, but the dinosaurs that lived millions of years ago, can we just find them laying on top of the ground? No. No. Where do we find them? How do we find those dinosaurs? But young man right here in the front with a blue balloon. Go ahead. How do you find a dinosaur? Dinosaur? Yeah. In Earth? Well. That's right. It's in the Earth. So we have to go out into the field. We have to go out to states like Montana and Colorado and Wyoming. And we have to dig into the ground to get those bones out so that we can study the fossils that those dinosaurs leave behind. Now, there are a lot of different types of fossils. There are fossils that you can find in Wisconsin. Do you find dinosaur fossils in Wisconsin? Yeah. No. Yes. No. Yeah. No. Actually, that's right. You can't find dinosaurs because at the time of the dinosaurs, Wisconsin was actually under the ocean. Can you imagine that? If you wanted to go to the beach and you lived 65 million years ago, you could have gone right to Wisconsin and gone swimming in the ocean. Okay, so what we find when we look at rocks from Wisconsin and Ohio and Illinois is we find these little tiny animals. And you can see this, this is a piece of coral. Can anybody tell me where we can find coral today? In the ocean. The ocean, that's a good answer. In the ocean, that's right. Okay, so this plant was alive before the dinosaurs. Okay. And it's a plant a lot like plants that we would see today. And you can see it's about the size of my finger, okay. this leaf of this plant. And so scientists can look at the plants that were alive, and they can tell what the weather was like. They can tell how much rainfall there was. They can tell a lot about what was happening around the world millions of years ago by looking at plants and looking at animal fossils. Who can tell me what this is? Does anybody have a guess? It is part of a skull. And what do you think these are sticking that's down right here? Teeth. 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 Teeth, that's right. Now, are these teeth that you would want to find walking around on a dark night? No, no. No way. Who wants to take a guess what type, which dinosaur these teeth come from? Oh, right here. Go that's right, this is from T-Rex, wow. the largest carnivore that ever lived. T-Rex, with these teeth that could be 8 to 10 inches long. And you can see these teeth are very pointed. And this hole, where you can sort of see my face and I can stick my hand through, this is the nostril. This is where the T-Rex breathes through. So everybody point at your nostrils, on your nose, okay? You can see these teeth, they're actually shaped almost like a hook, okay? So if you see, this is the front of his mouth, and all of the teeth are pointed backwards. Why would those teeth be pointed backwards, do you think? When, the, when this velociraptor or when the T-Rex would bite a hold of an animal or some other type of food, it couldn't escape. It couldn't get out of those teeth because they would get caught on those hooks, on those teeth hooks that are pointed backwards. Okay, so this is really important when we look at these dinosaurs and we can learn a lot about what they ate. 